Joe Biden continues to lead in South Carolina polls when Bernie Sanders comes in second there. So let's break those numbers down by demographic. We are back with Niambi Carter, assistant professor of political science at Howard University, and Henry Rogers, Capitol Hill reporter at The Daily Caller. Um, all right, so South Carolina, always interesting to see yeah. what's going on there. Oh, yeah. And we we're talking about Biden and how strong he is, and nowhere is he stronger than South Carolina, if we can throw the numbers up on the board. Now, uh, one note about this poll, it was done in an unusual way. They did it first as, like, if you were doing ranked choice voting, how would it work? And then they separated, separated out, okay, the way people actually vote. Mm -hmm. um, this is how it would come out. But look. Joe Biden, 39% Serious. dwarfing everybody else. I mean, Sanders is in a distant second there at 13%. What is it about this state in particular that gives Biden such a large edge? I mean, I think part of it is the large black population in that state. Mm -hmm. I mean, South Carolina is one of those states that people always say you cannot win if you can't beat or win in South Carolina. Yeah. I mean, Obama I think they're right. was successful yeah. there. Yeah. Um, I think people have a lot of, of reverence for Joe Biden's long career, the fact that he was Obama's VP. I think some of that goodwill has sort of rubbed off on him. And you gotta also think about who is actually going to vote. If these are older people who are moderate, this is their pick. Yeah. This is they're going to be their guy. Can yeah. we ask you that? We looked at a California poll, I think it was last week, where um, Sanders was in first, Warren was in second, I think Biden was in third. And the black population there was much more split between the candidates. I think um, Biden and Warren were roughly tied among black voters. Mm -hmm. It seemed like there was a different dynamic going on in California than in South Carolina and the other southern states. Yeah, we can't really figure that one out. Well, I mean, I think part of it is a geography uh -huh. question, right? I mean, California has a small black population compared to, say, a South Carolina yes. or North Carolina. So I think that's part of it. But I also think what do voters in North, in California want, right? I don't mm -hmm. think voters in, black voters in California are the same black voters that are in South Carolina. Yeah. And I think this regional component is really important. Mm -hmm. So I would have to see to know for sure, yeah. but I right. think California is just a different kind of mm -hmm. black person. Not that they're not black, but they just have different <laughs> lived experience no, right. on yeah. the West Coast. It's such an important was, was point to, to make and to show that, look, these popular, like, trying to paint it just along, trying to paint it just along racial lines is never going to work. Right. It's all regional, it's all geographical, and ultimately, I think the only thing that unites coast to coast is the class difference. I mean, and we see that, right, Henry? Yeah. Yeah. Which is that with Bernie, he leads amongst young black voters, yeah. under 30 years right. old. Mm -hmm. Over 60, Joe Biden crushes everybody else in the race. Yeah. And you just see this over and over again. One thing uh, I had to point out, friend of the show, Ryan Grimm, I believe we have his tweet, I want to throw it up on the screen, is that Pete Buttigieg is losing to South Carolina black voters. He's losing to John Delaney. Among okay? black Amongst voters. Black voters. So I, have it, I guess we don't have it on the screen, but here it is. <laughs> 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 which which is that so that's kind Joe of Biden has I'm got 55%, Bernie at 16, then we start going, by the way, Tom, Tom Steyer, Steyer is beating Elizabeth what? Warren. Wait, so we go down to the sixth person, that's Don, John Delaney at 2.57%. Pete Buttigieg has got 1.29% oh black my court Lord. in the state of South they Carolina. Hate, they hate him there. To your point, Niambi, you can't win the Democratic nomination. It's no, not going to happen. I don't think yeah. so. And I think there are a number of reasons, right? I mean, to, to, I, mean I, know, I know a lot of people talk about the homophobia in the black community, which mm. I think is just, a, it's a catchy headline, but not actual truth. Sure. Yeah. Um, right. There are lots of reasons not to be into Pete Buttigieg. I mean, yeah. he's a 30-something guy from a small city. He won with, what, 9,000 voters? Yeah. I mean, like, no. so yeah, Eight become the president, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. After this experience. With, by the way, the same ideology as Joe Biden. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's a centrist. He is not promising these, these great right. changes. I think he's interesting. I think he's telegenic. I think he has a story. But I don't think his story is enough, because when you look at these same polls, and people want somebody who they think can beat Donald Trump, that's their biggest concern. And he doesn't look like he's the guy. He's not ready yet. Yeah. yeah. What do you think, Henry? I think South Carolina is a must win. So I think yeah. that, the, as I said, there's two front runners and there's, I think, the two candidates now, Biden and Bernie. I'm very curious to see what Bernie does in the state because he needs to pick it up. He needs to get that ground number up yes. from 13 from 13 percent back yeah. to 40 percent where right. Biden is. Um, South Carolina is crucial. So it's a must win. I will say the only saving grace he has is that California has bumped up to the fifth state on Super Tuesday, and mm -hmm. he's doing quite well there. So it could equal out, but it's still not looking yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, I think what yeah. people are counting on, Sanders, look, I don't. the only three candidates, in my view, that have a chance at winning this thing are Biden, Sanders, and Warren. I think Pete, I mean, 1% with Biden. Like, this is no, not. not yeah. And he's been working on this and working on this, and it seems All the money be, in the world ain't going to solve this. Seems no. to be going backwards, if yeah. anything. So yeah. I don't consider him a serious. 
close contender. Um, you know, I think for Sanders and Warren, the only path is they have to win Iowa and New Hampshire, yeah. and maybe that starts to shift yeah. things on the ground. Maybe that starts to puncture this, like, veil of electability around Biden, but it's not easy. No, it's not. All right, thank you guys Thanks, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Tomorrow on Rising, a country you may not realize a significant backer of Silicon Valley, Saudi Arabia. Journalist Edward Onwesco sheds light on the kingdom's connections to the tech capital. And we're going to dive into the fallout of Mayor Pete's time at McKinsey and what his client list could tell us about the candidate with writer Nathan Robinson. Also, do not forget to send us your Rising Cues using the hashtag Rising Cues on whatever sap social platform you're on. Looking on Instagram, Twitter, check us out at both of those spots. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day, guys. Thank you.